two things. One, I work in a polarizing industry, and so if you didn't catch that, to boil it down, I own a gun shop and an indoor shooting range. So it's a polarizing industry. I'll throw that out there right now. I will not be speaking to you from the perspective of that's what I do for a living. I'll be uh, just talking to you from the perspective of I'm a guy trying to run a business and I have ad salespeople calling on me all the time, marketing people calling on me all the time. And how do I sort that out and what I do about it? So I hope that that's what you're in here in the room for. One of two things, you're either on the business side of things trying to understand it as a small business owner, or if you're an ad sales rep or a marketing partner in here, maybe I can help you gain some insight as to who your client might be when you're trying to call on somebody. Um, because it's, it, it can be an adversarial relationship one way or another, especially for, when you're first trying to call on someone and, um, or embark on this area. Do I have any ad sales reps in here? All right, very good. Uh, do you mind, uh, what kind of medium? Print and digital, okay, all right, very good. Uh, anybody from an ad agency? Developing or anything like that? Okay, uh, how about um, in, from a segment, business segment perspective, anybody in a B2B relationship in here? Okay, all right, and then everybody else is B2C, directly to a consumer type? Okay, all right, very good. Any, uh, who has services? Just your business is straight services. Okay, who has a brick and mortar with a product? All right, very good. And then uh, any franchise owners in here or operators in here from a franchise or purely independent? Franchise? Okay. So the rest of you are purely independent. You're one of, one of yourself out there in the industry. Okay. Who has, uh, on the independent side of things specifically, who has um, a national organization or a regional or state organization that helps you through this space? Anybody have those kinds of resources? Okay. A few of you have some national uh, services. Okay, so the rest of you are just trying to scratch it out and figure it out. Okay, and that's kind of what we're doing. That's what we do it with where we're at. I think um, somewhere in this morning, uh, it might have been uh, uh, with a Google uh, what's her name, Whitney from Google. I'm not sure who it was, but I heard somebody make the comment about working on your business as much as you work in your business. And I'm pretty sure that that's why y'all took the time out today to be away so you can invest on into your business from that perspective. And that's one of the things I really want to, uh, really want to I guess, um, uh, emphasize today. And I have to manually do this, so forgive me here as we move along here. Looking at the big picture, a couple things about self-awareness. Uh, that's, I guess that's really where it starts from, right? A self-awareness of what you know and what you don't know. And what you're comfortable with what you don't know and who you're after to try to help, what, what kind of people you put into your life or into your business life as partners to help you figure out what you don't know and what are you really after there. Um, something I always want to, so I spent a little bit of time at Meredith. Everyone's probably familiar with them downtown, big national media partner. I spent a little bit of time with them. I spent a long time, uh, when I was in the military, I spent a long time with Navy recruiting. That's how I ended up in the Midwest. I'm not from here originally. I came here on a, uh, on a Navy recruiting assignment uh, a long time ago. I used to joke and say I came here in the spring when the river was high and then when it come time to leave, the river was low and my boat couldn't get out. So I was in the Navy. So, um, but <laughs> one thing I want you to uh, think about, if you don't already think about this, but raise your level of consciousness around this. Are you building or doing anything as a brand or do you just have a business? Because there's a difference. And if you're engaging in any kind of marketing or, or advertising tactics or strategies, you are doing something towards your brand whether or not you realize it. And whether or not you also realize it, uh, your customers are going to develop a persona of what your brand is or what your business is. And we all have a goal of growing our business uh, into something, right? That's why we're in it. We have, you have a drive to be an entrepreneur, to do something and all those kinds of things. But what is your end game? What is your goal? Is it a legacy to pass something down? Do you have an opportunity to grow it and turn it into a franchise operation? Do you want to replicate it, bring more people in, create more locations? You know, all those kinds of things. Well, that all takes a brand building experience. And if you don't have some inkling of approaching what you do from building a brand, uh, your business may never really flourish at the level it wants. And like I said, one, no matter what, one way or another, good or bad, our customers develop a persona of our business. And are they developing the type of persona we want? And how are we influencing what that persona of our business or our brand looks like, right? So if I was to put up a McDonald's cup this morning, 
You can see those golden arches. You see it on the freeway when you're driving. If they have a big interstate sign, whatever, those golden arches uh, appear to be something. The Google symbol this morning. Um, and all of it in the presentation with Whitney, the little colored Google symbol, that brand, that image, that personifies something about what your experience is with that. What does that do with you, with your company? And it's not just your logo. Don't misunderstand. It's not just a logo. So those are kind of some of the things I want to talk about a little bit as we delve and drive into media a little bit and getting into the media. Okay? Uh, let's see here. The last thing, um, I guess before I leave this slide, is... Understanding your segment, if you're in a B2B or B2C environment, what is your segment? She did a great job. Like I said, I built a, a lot of my talking points this morning off of uh, what she had up there, Whitney did, with the, I think it was the journey about the person who had a refrigerator that was damaged or broken. All right, where are you at on that, on that roadmap? Have we ever really thought about that? Where do we fit? Are we at the end? Are we at the beginning? If you have a brick and mortar retail type of establishment, you think you're at the end. Well, you may have an opportunity to influence that very much at the beginning when that person woke up and milk wasn't so good for the cereal this morning. And are we doing that? And then also, when you're looking at what you're doing, today was, I, I think in the description it talked about um, uh, media and understanding media. That's an advertising tactic, buying a piece of media. What's your overall marketing? And do you understand and how you're segmenting the difference between are you marketing or are you advertising? And how does your advertising fit into the overall um, effect of what you're doing to advertise? and to market it at large, and there is a difference. Okay, setting you up to succeed. If you're, at a, if you're at a storefront level, and I say storefront, I don't necessarily mean brick and mortar, but you're in your business, it could be your home business, it could be a, a brick and mortar, it could be wherever you're physically at. Um, it's not uncommon to get a sales call from an from a advertising person or of some nature, and it never comes at the time we initially want it, does it? They walk in, uh, you know, <laughs> They know if they try to call to set it up, we just won't take the call. If they walk in, we're, you, know, you may or may not have time uh, or give them the time. Uh, but the point is, um, uh, it's very important that you set time to take care of these types of activities. My business doesn't open until 10 a.m. every morning. I'm there usually between 7.15 and 7.30 every day. And that two and a half hours before we open up, that's my time to spend time on the business. Because when the business opens at 10 a.m., as much as I try to sit in my office and run things and do things, at a global perspective, I still get drug out onto the sales floor to do different things or to, to take care of things. Um, I had a goal to not be there till after uh, past noon this Saturday, and I had one of my instructors cancel to be able to teach an afternoon class that has 10 people booked in it. So in a crunch, I'm teaching now this class Saturday afternoon from noon until 4, and then I have to hurry home and get ready for a wedding that night. Didn't plan to do that, but that's what happens, and we, that happens to us every day, right? You enter the day with the best laid plans of what you're going to do, and by, you know, 90 minutes later, it's all out the window, right? But it's really, really important that you allocate time. Uh, I have ad salespeople walk into me all the time, walk in, they want to, whether it be, you know, whatever type of medium it is, and I, I'll almost meet with them every single time, we'll almost always meet with them, but that meeting is always very short. Hey, this is who I am, I appreciate you calling, I may or may not be in your space right now, um, I may or may not be planning that right now, you know, I give them what... My deal is, but then I'll tell them, I only take these calls between 8 and 10 a.m. in the morning. So give me your contact. I'll see where it fits. I'll be in touch. If it does, be prepared to be here between 8 and 10. If not, you're not going to work. And I, sometimes I'm that rude. Sometimes I'm not. But the point is, is that I make it work. But, and I make it work for me when it works for me because they're always calling on us at a crash moment of time when it's never good for us, right? But you've got to allocate the time to do it right and set yourself up for success with that. <clears throat> three to four times a year, allocating the time and creating the focus. I plan three to four times a year on a big picture what I think I'm going to do, and then I spend five or six times a year on some of the smaller, more tactical things to execute on those bigger ideas, right? And um, there's no magic sauce to that. It's just what you have to do. If you don't live your life by some type of planner, uh, paper, digital, or some tempo, of what you're doing in the first 10 days of the month, the second 10 days of the month, and the third set of 10 days of the month, so to speak, then your life is always gonna be chaotic. And it gets chaotic as it is as a business owner no matter what. You just can't stop that uh, unless you're flourishing so well you can hire so many people to do everything for you. Then you're probably not even in here to begin with. Um, so you have to create the focus and you have to plan and, and do that. But think of that. Um, I work really hard at, uh, right now, I'm finishing up my first and second quarter for 2020 
for what I think I'm going to do on a big picture strategy perspective. That's what I try to do. Uh, it doesn't always work out that well, but it does. First of all, it takes the pressure off me to be acting at the last minute. I can schedule it out, whether it be getting a piece of creative made for me or having to have something brought in from Vista Print or wherever I'm using or doing that. But it, it takes the pressure off for me to have to slam everything at the last minute and then do it, quite frankly, half-assed, right? So I always try to work at least one to two quarters in advance uh, and, and create the focus and uh, be able to do that in, in a way. <clears throat> Developing your budget. Anybody have any good ideas on what a budget ought to be? And what do you base your budget on? And you don't, I'm not asking for any, any, any trade secrets here. I guess, like big picture here, um, there's a, a variety of different um, uh, opinions out there, like lots of stuff. But uh, anywhere from 1% to 3% of your gross revenue is a really good place to start. If you're in wholesale, it may be a little less. If you're in retail and trying to reach the endpoint consumer, it might be a little bit higher. If you, have, if you need a lot of foot traffic and a lot of high volume through, through your business, it may be higher. If your sales cycles are longer and slower and, and there are larger ticket items, you may not need as much. But 1% to 3% is a good place to start of your gross revenue. Okay? And that would be for an overall marketing budget. Advertising and media within that may be a subset of that 1% to 3%. Okay? So that doesn't always seem like a whole lot, especially when you're looking at a, at a, a multifaceted uh, 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 idea or plan or pitch that's being put together you know, by a local TV station or, or something like that. Those, that budget may not seem to go very far, but it's a good place to start. Okay? It's a very good place to start. And depending on, like I said, what, you're, what type of business you're really in, you may need to scale that up and you may need to scale it down. But you need to think about it as marketing overall, what are you doing? And that's everything from putting your logo on your vehicle all the way down to buying business cards and buying media and everywhere in between. It's all marketing, and then what's the advertising subset of paid media from there, okay? Something, um, sorting through the options. I am, because I spent time at Meredith, because I spent time doing national advertising for military recruiting, and I spent time in some of those things, I'm hard on an ad sales rep. Um, I'm very hard. And a lot of times they won't even know my background and I won't even share my background with them. But when I say stuff like, uh, well, what's your DMA and exactly tell me the reach and frequency I can get with that budget? They start like, how do you know that? Why do you know that? You know, um, what, uh, what day part will I be in on that TV commercial you think I'm in? Is that a good day part? Does it have all the points that I need? And they're like, ooh, I, I don't know. Push an ad sales rep for what it takes to make you understand well. And so when you're sorting through your options up front, when you're setting yourself up to succeed, don't be afraid to do that. You don't need to be rude by any means, but don't be afraid to do that. After all, you're the client. You're the one that's hiring them. They're not hiring you type of thing. So remember that relationship. But edu um, educate yourself, but make them educate you, okay? And, when it, and, and another neat thing is, is that uh, I'll use outdoor for example. You may hear somebody say, well, you know, outdoor, nobody reads billboards. I've got a study that says, well, okay, that's fine. Take that for, a, for what it is and see what the outdoor people tell you. And then see what another person in this media that said outdoor wasn't any good. See what another ad salesperson in that space says outdoor does. Is, statistics are just that. They're numbers, right? Is something 40% great or did you fail by 60%, right? Yeah, I mean, you can take a number and do anything you want with it. Um, so that's a perspective, a matter of perspective. And, but make them, make them justify why they're a good spend for you. Really, really push on that. And, and uh, keep a notebook. You know, set up a, something really simple. A pad folio, a notebook, whatever, and just dedicate it to this kind of information. Put it down. But make an ad rep really, really, um, really, I don't want to say work as far as making them do things that's not for their, their purview per se. But uh, don't let it be an easy sale and just think, oh, yeah, okay, that's what I need to do. And then you're going to jump in and you're going to go for it. All right, so this is setting yourself up for, up for success. Allocating the time on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Trying to stay a quarter or two ahead if you can. Create the focus on what, what do your customer need to know? What do you need them to know? What do they think they need to know about you okay, for your product, good, or service? You've got to develop a budget. You've got to set it aside. You have to make it a line item expense on your income statement. If you're not, you're not going to do this well, okay? <clears throat> All right, defining the problem. That's my next slide here if I can get to it. 
Couple things that we really need to stop and think about. We all got into this, all, you all got into your own business for a reason. Whether you're an entrepreneur and there was a business seed and there was a void in the community doing what you do, you're just really passionate, you really love what you're doing, um, and everybody needs to share in the goodness of what you have to offer, whatever it is, we all have that, right? Some are more passionate and, and uh, philosophical and others are more practical. But you need to think about, are you a neighborhood or regional business? Are you one of many or one of a few? Who is your audience? What does that, what does that person look like? That can be a really difficult question sometimes when uh, a media person or an ad sales or a marketing partner wants to call on you. Hey, what's your customer look like? Who are they? I know I constantly want to say, I am really after that 25 to 45 year old. But statistically, hands down, month over month, 50 plus white males make up my audience, make up my, my revenue lines. Uh, and that's where it's at. But I keep, I keep trying to stiff arm that. And no, no, I want to go for these 25 to 35 year old experientials that are looking for something fun or experiential in life. And so uh, that type of thing. But do you know that? And are you honest with who your customer really is? What do you think you need them to know? And then on the other side of the coin, what kind of, do you ever really pay attention to the questions you get, the Facebook messages you get, or you know, whatever it might be as far as what your customer is constantly asking you that they think they need to know. Does that make sense? So are you synchronized with what you're trying to tell them, but what they really keep asking? You need to understand that and kind of think about that as you define your problem or the problem of what your advertising and marketing strategy is when you're defining and trying to base on some media. Made me think again from her uh, presentation this morning about the refrigerator journey. What did that person need to know and where all over the bat they were That'd be interesting to see what that would look like for a male or a female, the journey on if a refrigerator had to fix that, right? Because a male's gonna just try to jump right in and fix it. A female may, may be trying to sort out something different. We do act and behave differently when we're trying to solve a problem. Let's see here. Okay, consider the medium. We're not gonna jump really, really deep into these, but when you're looking at these different mediums, print, um, broadcast, radio, digital, social, outdoor, they all have a place and they all have an opportunity. Direct mail, we get tons of junk mail at home. Thankfully, really cool, I just moved to a new house after 18 years and I've purged a lot of that crap because it doesn't forward, right? But, all, but the one thing that is still just showing up is a lot of direct mail that just goes to resident. <clears throat> you know, while 85% of that probably goes in the trash, another 10% sits on the counter for a week because it looks like something you might act on, People do act on that kind of, uh, on, on direct mail, coupons, offers, those kinds of things. So they all do have their place and they do all have their opportunity. Digital, digital can be overwhelming. It's not just having a website. We learned some really, really in-depth tools. Has anyone ever dug into Google Ads on their own and developed a Google Ad console? I mean, you almost have to have a programmatic experience just to even understand how deep you go. Anybody jump into your own Google Analytics? Yeah, that can, you, you can dig into the weeds really, really, really fast there. And you can get overwhelmed really, really fast. And create conflicts too, if you're not careful setting stuff up. You can create conflicts with the way it works for you, okay? Um, I'm gonna run a little video here about Every Door Direct from US Mail. And the only, what's, it's not so much about USPS Every Door, Every Door Direct campaign, but it's an actual really good overview of all the things that you can take into place, that tools that, that you can, um, uh, you can make happen. So let's see if this will work here. That brave statement of you're gonna do video, good luck. It worked earlier this morning. How do you get the word out to the people near your business who matter most? Do it with every door direct mail. It features an online mapping tool for finding potential customers near your business. To use the mapping tool, enter a starting point. Then select nearby postal routes where you want your mail pieces delivered. You can see demographic data based on census reports, like age range and average household size and income, and choose among available routes. When you're finished planning your mailing, you can schedule it for delivery. Each mail piece costs less than the price of a stamp to send. Creating your mailing is easy too. You can do it yourself, or find a list of printers or mail service providers on USPS.com. When your mail pieces are ready, bring them to the post office and will deliver to every address along the routes you've selected. Reach potential customers simply and cost effectively. 
Every door direct mail from the U.S. Postal Service. Your post office anywhere. When I watched that, the reason I wanted to put it in there was, I, first of all, it's interesting the tool that the U.S. Post Office can offer you. And we all, like I said, we all get these things in the mail, different size flyers and all that kind of stuff. But the level of detail in which they can help you and how strategic and sliced up you can make this, right down to the demographic, choosing the mail route, um, uh, buying ages and groups and all those things. And that's an overarching, just a little 90-second video about the total ad by, ad by uh, experience. If you're looking at an outdoor campaign using Lamar or Clear, uh, Clear Channel Lamar or uh, a couple of the others, I can't remember the other name, Fairway I think is the other company in town, um, you know, ask them for that type of information. Who do you reach? You, know, you think, well, that, how do you measure who sees stuff on, on, uh, uh, um, on the freeway? You know, what, is the, what is the reach? If you're putting up a billboard, is it lit at night? Does it actually work 24-7? That'll be one of the things they'll come in and tell you. This works 24-7 all the time. Not if there's no lights on it at night, it won't you know, type of thing. Uh, digital and outdoor is a really, really emerging thing for the outdoor industry to offer digital. Well, think about your own experience driving down the interstate. Are you able to actually read that at the right time? And how many, how many um, ads are they rotating per minute? And how fast are you going and blah, blah, blah. You know, those kinds of things. So challenge, on, challenge them on what they're doing. But the point is, with what USPS, USPS just showed us in here, being able to pick routes, times, delivery, demographic, all of that, every other piece of advertising does the same thing. And do they align with your goals? Do they align with who your customer is? Do they align with the buying habits and patterns of what your business is and the tempo which, in which it operates at? If it doesn't, that medium may or may not be good for you. That was the reason I wanted to show you that. <clears throat> Mobile, uh, in considering, considering the medium, without doubt, uh, this, I think six hours and 42 minutes was the stat that they put, she put up this morning about we spend time on our phone on mobile, or on, on, on mobile, could be tablet too, but the device. Um, we built uh, what we thought was an out awesome website. We, it, the desktop experience of our website is just awesome. It has everything you need. Um, having come from a media, back, uh, media and branding background, I started finding affiliates to plug ads in. I was running 300 by 250s, and, uh, you know, and we actually had them in ad rotation with some affiliate partners, so I thought I'd have the money to incrementally draw, make a little, few bucks from, from a, affiliate sales with some partners and all this other stuff. And um, after about nine months of, of being open with that website and having it out there, and again, my industry is very polarizing. Under the last presidential administration, my industry was under a lot of pressure and a lot of attention, and our traffic was through the roof in a lot of ways. Under the current administration, not so much. So our business is in a down cycle right now, and we see all those other things in there. But what I realized was that our website has an awesome desktop experience, but a horrible, horrible mobile experience, or responsive experience, let me put it that way, because it could be tablet, Android. You know, some of those Galaxy phones are like the size of a small tablet, you know? Um, all the way down to the little bitty ones. And then uh, I, we look at Google Analytics on our website. We just run a basic WordPress site. It's pretty simple, but I, we pl plugged in Google Analytics. 72% of our traffic's mobile. And this awesome right rail that I built on the side that has all these quick links and the ability to interact with us really fast, the right rail on mobile loads last. Well, I also had it so our little blog post would set up for the first 25 top posts. Well, by the time you do all that on a little screen, 25 posts, your finger is like, you've, you've worn the, you, yeah, you'll never get a fingerprint off that fingertip. You'll swipe in so many times, you'll never see the right rail. It never loads. And so it's like, what do we do about that? How do we fix that? How do you take a look at that? So digital is uh, uh, from your website and to all the way down to how they inter your customer can interact with your website. And is it even responsive or not? Uh, and does it hold what it needs to on a mobile perspective? If you don't know, um, if you don't know the, um, the ratio of your desktop to mobile experience on your, on your web presence, you're hugely missing out. It doesn't matter what type of business environment you're in right now. Now, there's still a huge amount of opportunity for print and digital, or print and traditional advertising, all things to advertise your business, but there's no way for you to not have a solid, robust, quality mobile digital experience. There's just it just doesn't exist out there unless you just don't really care about reaching almost anybody, okay? And that's just the reality of it because you, I was amazed that I actually got a, um, I don't know who makes it, Haibu 
decks, but a phone book. A phone book showed up at our business the other day. Now it was way smaller and way thinner than they ever used to be, but one still physically showed up there. Uh, and just free at the doorstep one morning. And so uh, uh, it, that blew me away. And so anyways, you gotta really think about that. Okay, yes? Do you feel, when analyzing your mobile site and knowing what you know about your demographic and how even if you want your 25, 40 year olds, you're actually getting the like kind of older boomer generation. Do you, have you customized your mobile site then to fit more like the boomer generation who didn't grow up with the internet versus like the sure. generation? Sure, we, we try to. And so this is where I'll step back for a minute and away from the presentation. So we, um, we have our website, we're very active on social media, and then because we collect email addresses when someone comes in to, to use our facility, I have an organic email list of almost 20,000 customers. Okay, so pretty good. And I don't know if anyone's my customer in here and gets anything from me. I hope I don't spam you too bad or whatever. <laughs> but um, I work really hard at trying to integrate everything that we do together. Um, uh, my category of, of, e of, of commerce, retail, I'm in a forbidden bad category in the, in the world out there. Google will let, let me advertise openly. Um, Facebook will not let me advertise openly. I cannot advertise one of my products that we sell, a firearm. I cannot advertise it on and say, we just got this in, great deal. I mean, I can, but I'll get driven down in the algorithms and they'll kill us. So I use social media really just for a social experience, fun stuff, neat stuff, um, uh, emotional, passionate, uh, community-based things. We just did a big fundraiser for Special Olympics here last week. Um, and we just did a bunch of things around that with social media, uh, with, with uh, Special Olympics. We tag as many different people as we can so we can take advantage of those audiences. We do the same thing on Instagram. Uh, and then I use email to communicate directly uh, and then website for information. But to answer your question here is what we do is we will take and um, we will use email to educate how to do things on our website or I'll make a post on social media about how to find a new feature or something on our website. Um, or um, uh, we discovered that we used to have to, we had a little button on there to do a pre-visit waiver before you came in for a liability waiver, and that wasn't loading on mobile right. So we actually did a campaign and used social media and our direct email about how when you go to our website, how to find that button and do that pre-visit. Does that make sense? So point being is that we're trying to use one medium to educate how to use another medium based on the demographic we're trying to talk to. So we do do those kinds of things. And I say we, that's just me. That's what I do between 7.30 and 10 o'clock in the morning a lot, or between 10 o'clock and midnight a lot at home. I don't have a marketing team. I don't have a marketing partner that helps me do all this. I'm a one-man band. So on almost all that um, and trying to do all that kind of stuff. Um, movie theaters, have you thought about approaching a movie theater, finding out? They actually have uh, companies that that's what they do at the, uh, at the, that you can buy into your local movie theater and do things there uh, all the, on all the uh, commercials up front. I know, uh, I think there was, there was a rule about they had to start publishing the actual start time of the movie so you could show up on time to skip all the stuff up front, right? But uh, uh, anyways, but there's that opportunity. Tra you, obviously trade shows and industry events uh, and whether or not you have co-op money. That's the other thing to think about when you're developing your budget. Is there any opportunity for co-op or someone else to partner or help you do the heavy lifting? Affiliate marketing is another good one where you can try to find additional dollars for anything, okay? Um, chamber of Commerce, are you all members of your local Chamber of Commerce? Do you attend those events? Are you doing other things? Are you sponsoring the business before breakfast event or the, you know, the after hour cocktail thing and bringing people in uh, type of thing? Online advertising, this one goes all over the place, but it, if you don't have a good basic website or landing page, you need to have one. Uh, but online, it can be exhausting. We learned about some really in-depth tools there this morning. And again, if you've ever jumped into, your, uh, into owning your Google page and trying to buy into Google Ads, Google Analytics, uh, it can get overwhelming really, really quick. But don't, you know, um, don't be afraid to go where you don't know, but at the same time, don't get too wrapped up over it. You're, in, you're wrapped up in the ax when you lose focus of everything in the big picture. If it's not gonna do something that you can gain from right away, don't worry about jumping in and, and wasting all your time with it. But continue to push yourself. That's why you're in business to begin with, right? You're pushing yourself into something you, that you're, um, you're passionate about. Search negative retargeting ads. We talked about that machine learning today. We've all been victims of being retargeted on ads. Uh, look into that. If, if digital advertising is part of something you're doing, but again, 
ask a rep to really push on how that's going to work for you and how that can work for you or not. And what will the results really look like? Okay. At the end of the day, it's all about dollars coming through the till. And if you're not seeing that directly or indirectly, figure it out. And then that was something that I meant to mention at the beginning. How do you plan to put into place something that you can monitor? And what does success look like to you? And ask your ad sales rep, what does success look like to them? How do they know you're being successful? Besides just writing another check for another quarter. Okay. Social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Messenger, uh, filters on, on Instagram. These are all things that you can be doing if you're not already doing. Um, local, business cards, parades, floats, events, being here, all the sponsors that are out here today. They've all got an interest in advertising and that's part of what they're doing. Are they marketing or are they advertising? A little bit of both. Having tchotchke to give away, all those little things. Outdoor, talked a little bit about that. So here's kind of a checklist. Um, define your goals, know what you want to do. Pick from what you need to know or what you want to promote or what you want people to know about you. Depending on your size of business, you may or may not be able to advertise at an umbrella level. Maybe you need to pick a service. Is that service seasonally? Are you, are you promoting it at the right time? Have we, has anybody noticed an uptick in the auto collision uh, uh, ads on TV and other places? Well, two reasons. We're getting ready to go into winter and two, deer season. Deer running across during the rut and, and deer running all over. Iowa has one of the highest collision rates of deer, auto deer things. And so auto vehicle, you know, vehicle repair places are advertising now. Seed dealers on TV with the agriculture, they advertise in the fall because even though their farmers are um, you know, knee deep and trying to harvest right now, they're booking and buying their seed for next spring. That's what they're doing. Where are you at in the seasonal? Are you finding yourself that you're in the season right now and you didn't plan very well and you're trying to make a hasty Hail Mary decision? Or are you getting out in front of your customer and your buying cycle? <clears throat> Identifying your target audience, knowing what your message and your graphics look like. Most likely, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a king at throwing a bunch of junk into PowerPoint, grouping it up, right clicking and saving it as a JPEG or a PNG or some other file and trying to call it good. That works out a little bit, but it will not translate into very good high resolution stuff. Spend some time to find a good partner that can help you develop vector art of your logos, uh, some other things that has great utility to it. And think about that when you're working on your message and your graphics. When you're investing in creative, because you're going to have to, to some degree, what will give you good utility? Good use in, in year over year, uh, things that are, that are evergreen, if you will. All right? Checklist of def uh, determining where and to find your audience. Think about looking at an advertising buy as, as hiring your next employee. Don't hesitate to think, you know what? I really am going to get, a, I'm going to get a, a, a jump on 2020. And I'm going to bring in uh, someone from Hearst and KCCI. I'm going to bring in someone from WHO or maybe Channel 5 and KCWI or for TV and, and digital and, and all their uh, products of, of uh, suite of products. Big Green Umbrella, locally, they have a lot of digital and, and uh, print type products, right? Those everyday magazines, zip code magazines that show up at your house. Coupon books, those kinds of things. Think of it as an interview. Bring two or three of them in at a time and interview them. Don't, I mean, and really approach it that way and don't worry about it. Uh, don't worry about the, the and, and even tell them that up front. Hey, look, I'm, I'm interested in what you have to learn. I'm learning right now, but this is kind of an, in, in, a more of an interview process to find out one, because you might have a great product, but you and I just might not click. And, and no, no offense here, but really, if we don't have a good relationship, I know that in a minute, um, in, in a hurry, you won't be able to count on me to make a snap decision, and I won't appreciate you want me to make a snap decision. And number two, if I need something at the last minute, I don't know that you'll be able to pull it off. Because are you really in my corner as a partner? Is this relational or transactional? And, and approach it on your terms. Don't be afraid to do that. Okay? And just tell them, it's nothing personal. It's just business. And without mine, yours wouldn't be here. And without you know, yours, I won't be there. That's all it's about. We want to grow together. Are you leading or lagging? Setting your budget, selecting your outlets, and then measuring your results. I will tell you, though, this right here. When you're considering what you're doing up here, you really need to think about how you're going to want to measure it and monitor that. What will success look like? Are you trying to see more people come through the door, ring the front doorbell? Um, or is it backdoor business? Is it affiliate business? Whatever it does look like. You do need to think about ahead of time what this looks like, not at the end trying to sort out with what you're left. Okay. I don't know that I have anything else. Let me look here. Okay, yeah, very quickly. 
ideas on a mix or plan. Pick one major and a couple of minor items. It could be TV and local deals and a lifestyle magazine. You know, like running something on channel 8 or uh, channel 8 or 13 or whatever and then doing one of those coupon books and then finding something in all the lifestyle magazines that show up around town. Consider your seasonality. Um, media priced differently throughout the year. Outdoors cheaper in the winter than it is in the summer. Radio can be opposite. Um, and then these kinds of things, local deals, whatever it might be. But I would, I would encourage you to consider one major and two to three minors, if you will, and you will need to be the judge on what's major or minor to you. It's gonna be based on your ad spend. But it's not, it's not uh, unrealistic to think, you know, I mean, five grand a month, uh, that's 60 grand a year. I don't know if that fits in your one to 3% ratio, but five grand a month won't go very far in a lot of cases. But on the other side of the coin, do not be afraid to push and challenge and ask and demand for value added and free goods. It's there. It's there a lot. There's always a remnant space in, 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 in inventory all the time. Okay? <clears throat> Make time, be intentional, do what makes sense and makes comfortable to you, but do consider risk. Demand results. And again, spend as much time on your business as you do in your business. And I will tell you that as you're spending time on and in your business, in any shape or form, regardless of what's going on here, spend time in your family, not on your family. Because when you're too caught up here, you're not in your family. You're just trying to think you're doing something for your family. And at the end of the day, 20 years will evaporate and they grow up and that's all over. So any questions, anything I can answer or help out with? So regarding the donations and sponsorships, you yeah. just mentioned your uh, fundraiser. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? How do you choose? Was that an audience? Was that a personal? Were there results as far as mark that being a marketing tool? Yep. Or just a, I really believe in it, that's why I did it? Sure. So we do two major sponsorships a year. We do one with the Puppy Jake Foundation, the service dog organization, and it's a partnership with Simon Conway from WHO and then we do the Special Olympics. Um, the, uh, the Puppy Jake is a personal thing to me as a veteran, I'm a disabled veteran as well, so that has some personal thing to it. Um, and then uh, Special Olympics was actually brought to me by law enforcement. There's a called Law Enforcement Torch Run, group of volunteer law enforcement that helps support Special Olympics nationally and locally. They brought that idea to me. In every case, um, you have to find out what fits well for your business financially because, um, as an example, Puppy Jake, um, they want us to raise money for Puppy Jake. It's always much more valuable to raise money when Simon Conway's on doing live remotes. Simon Conway costs five grand to have him there for four hours. So how do you overcome five grand? Or are you in a business position to where you can write off the five grand and take everything come in the, day, in the door that day to also in turn donate it? So in case you're really donating, you know, if you raise $3,500, you really actually donated $8,500 in, in, in kind donation to work that day, right? So you have to find out if those things fit your business and you need to look at the total overall cost because you will have very much indirect or direct costs associated with those and do they just fit or not? Um, some people, uh, uh, in, in most small businesses, I think in my opinion, at least in our opinion, you, you do want to choose to sponsor and do fundraisers and things like that that personally mean something to you or there's some cause for it or one way or another. Um, and, 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 and you just have to find out what that means and where that fits for your organization. And then like I said, the, uh, does the cost, can you overcome the cost, does it matter? Can you absorb it and just give that all away in, in goods and services or not? Does that answer your question? Do you feel you get results as far as return in more customers or, or is it really purely a um, you know, both, both. We do see results. I see that as an overall total brand building experience. I want people to see if they see my brand and they see that we're doing those kinds of things, that, that, that um, we're here to be more than just a, your average local brick and mortar business, but we are trying to invest in the community and be a good community partner. Yep. Yes, ma'am. So um, my worst one is sometimes all my dollars. Just kidding. No, um, uh, one of my best campaigns was um, the first year and a half we opened up and I ran outdoor with, uh, it was Clear Channel at the time, now it's Lamar. Uh, we had people, drove after drove after drove of people walking in going, I saw your billboard, I saw your billboard. Um, and it was like, wow, that's awesome. Well, w very quickly, and I think I'm almost out of time here, 
Yep. Um, very quickly, when people have to do our waiver to visit our facility, a liability waiver, we did that on Google Forms. It was a free thing we made on Google Forms. I ask in there, how did you hear about us? Why are you here today? And I try to anecdotally or informally measure what brought people in the door. And so um, uh, word of mouth will always be the single largest thing you, you, you is your advertising medium, but word of mouth is directed or influenced by something else. But outdoor was probably one of our biggest ones. On an ongoing basis, I do something with KCWI. Uh, I'm on Lou and Jackie every, every once a month in the mornings on the Lou and Jackie show on channel 23, I think it is. And, uh, and that has good traction for us currently. Yep. I think there's a question somewhere else. Well, my question, I mean, so we, our biggest thing, I'm PM and Apparel, so we are constantly getting, you know, teams and stuff like that coming in. And all those teams are looking for, you know, sponsorships, trying to get their jerseys covered or whatever. I don't know if you are seeing that or, like, how do you kind of, like, how do you turn away a bunch of children that are like, hey, can you help yep. my baseball team? Or, you know, all those things that you know you're not going to really see a return on the investment. It's more of a community Sure. So my, the session's officially ended. So if you need to walk out, you're totally fine to walk out, but I'm going to answer the question, okay? And do, you will not offend me if you walk out, and I can talk loud to overcome your noise. Um, uh, so what I've done, because we're inundated with those things too, what I've done is on our website, I have a community request, and I put on there first and foremost, here's a form um, that you have to fill out. Um, I put in there in bold letters, we do not accept donations, or we will not consider something in under 45 days because it's always at the last minute. Um, we don't consider it under 45 days. We only want to do things local that impact the community. We try to, we try, and I, I give some parameters on what looks, what we want to do, right? And then, so that's first and foremost, and I solicit that way. Even if someone walks in the store, I've got a little computer that's like an online sales kiosk for us because we have a retail environment. My employees are directed to walk them over there and fill that out. I know what's going on. I can hear it around the corner, but I will not step out and talk to them. I'll wait to see the email pop into my basket, and then I'll put it on my calendar, and I'll deal with it in five days when it's my time. Um, uh, and then we almost always do, um, you know, we do gift cards and other value-related things. I do record it. I have a spreadsheet that we record for every incoming um, request, whether we filled it or not. And then, and, and actually, our incoming web form fills that out to that spreadsheet. We set it up to go to a Google Doc, all that stuff. Um, it's really simple. And then we, whether we filled it, and then whether or not, uh, what we filled it with like a $25 free range pass or a whatever, and then I aggregate that at the end of the every month because I add it to a line item for my partners to see what are indirect liabilities of gift cards or other community focus that is out there that's an indirect expense. In an, in an, it's technically a long-term liability on your, on your ba balance sheet, actually, in your finances, if you really want to get detailed about it. But we do that because I also try not to spend more than 1% a month on our in-kind donations like that. Does that make sense? So I'm pretty, I'm a data-driven junkie. And so, uh, but I like to try to do that. But we've set it up to where it's pretty automated. And that's how we deal with it. So one, um, uh, we, we do say no sometimes. Yep. Yep. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it.